What is going on guys? This is another architecture review video and this time we're talking about a geofencing application that leverages Amazon location services and IoT to track some high value goods as they enter and exit a facility. So I thought this was a really interesting example to look at. It uses a lot of different AWS technologies, but what I wanted to do prior to looking at this architecture diagram is just walk through a basic example that I kind of drew out and talk about how they can potentially be leveraging these technologies in this particular use case. Right, so in this diagram, this yellow polygon here corresponds to our warehouse, as I've kind of labeled over here. Uh, and we are tracking PS5s over here, a whole skid of PS5s. That is our high value good that we are interested in in this example. And we know this is very expensive to get your hands on one right now. Um, so the idea is here to detect when this skid of PS5s enter into our facility and we want to send a notification to uh, whoever shipped it to us to say hey we received your skid of ps5s and then once it's in this location uh, or in this warehouse rather we want to know like is it over here is it over here is it in you know the shipping dock which may be over here so on and so forth so that's kind of um, what we're, we're dealing with here uh, in addition, when we get down to the technology being used, we're going to see that when we use Amazon Location, when you kind of cross this boundary uh, that's corresponding to this polygon, we get what's called an enter or an in event. And then when we do the opposite, when we go this way, uh, we get a out or an exit event. So those are the types of events to expect from um, our backend architecture. We're going to get some ins and outs. And then we're also going to get live real-time event updates for, you know, as our our devices or as our skid of PS5s travel, we're going to get live geolocation coordinates for each one here. So how do they, they do this? Like how does this fit in with the Bluetooth receiver stuff? That's what I want to kind of cover first. Uh, so the first step is to like add a tag. So they need to add a tag to the skid here uh, of a Bluetooth of a Bluetooth emitter. And then they've configured this warehouse here to have some fixed number of Bluetooth receivers. And using these Bluetooth receivers, uh, they are using the signal strength of each of the tags. So for example, let's actually start with a basic case. So if I'm in the middle um, of this location, like my PS5 skid is right here, my signal strength to each of the four corners here would be probably like 25%, right, to each of these. So we can assume on our arbitrary coordinate plane that we are directly in the center. Now, if I am somewhere over here, this is where my PS5 skid is, I may have something like, I don't know, 50% signal to these two, and maybe something like, I don't know, uh, 10 or 15% to these guys. So using this kind of methodology, we can triangulate our geo coordinates here. And I'm not going to get into how that actually works, but essentially at each tick or every kind of moment when our geo coordinates are being collected, we can determine where we are. And we can also determine if you know we're on the left side or the right side of this. Now, in combination with this polygon that we've set up in Amazon location, it's going to automatically fire events when we cross this threshold in either direction. So it's some pretty interesting technology. So that's kind of what we're working with here. So I hope this helped explain the example uh, that we're going to be dealing with. Let's take a look at the architecture diagram to understand this a little bit more. Uh, so over on the left hand side here, I'm just going to circle this section really quick. Uh, this is all for warehouse configuration. So we have our Bluetooth receivers. Uh, these were the things that we had, you know, over here in the four. Uh, actually, let me get the colors to match up here. So uh, these are the receivers that we have set up for uh, the four corners of our warehouse in this example. Uh, so I'm not going to circle them all. Uh, then we have our Bluetooth emitter tags, which is what, in this case, I suppose our shipper would attach to our skid of resources before they ship it. They'd probably have to give us like the device ID or, or some kind of other metadata on that, but not going to go into that here. And then um, with that, we are using, you can see here, uh, Lambda functions that are kind of feeding into IoT Greengrass. And this is the neat thing with using uh, IoT Greengrass. It kind of walks you through some of the features here. So it supports edge compute, uh, supports device management and secure connectivity. So you can run uh, computations on premise and not necessarily have to communicate with the cloud. Uh, so some neat stuff here in IoT Greengrass. So just to summarize, we have these Bluetooth receivers, we have these location devices, they're constantly sending their geo coordinates, uh, and that's kind of where this enters the fray here. So all of that geo coordinate information is going into IoT Core, which is just primarily the reporting mechanism for IoT devices. 
that's flowing into a AWS Lambda function that's doing some transformations. And then uh, eventually that's going into Amazon location, which is really where the uh, kind of polygon or location based logic is taking place. So I forgot to add initially, I'll just get a different color here. You have to set up your geofences in Amazon location and set up your trackers so that it kind of knows what location you're interested in tracking. So you need to provide it with the actual GPS coordinates so that it's able to deduce when something enters or exits the premises. So from there, if we're feeding this information into Amazon location, uh, Amazon location is going to be able to determine that in and out event. And it's going to publish that information to Amazon EventBridge. Now, EventBridge is just an event bus. So you can say, you know, we got this type of event in and we got this type of event out that gets sent to Amazon EventBridge. And we have a certain number of subscribers that are interested in one or the other or both events. So Amazon EventBridge allows us to kind of delegate who receives this event. Uh, so from here, we branch off in two separate directions. The first one is, and just different color now, the first direction is we go this way. So we just go directly to Amazon SNS and we notify our users. Our users in this case could be whoever shipped that skid of PS5. So we just go all the way here. Um, the other option here is to do some additional processing. So we would go from Amazon EventBridge and then that would go into another Lambda function. This Lambda function is going to be the handler of the in and out events. Uh, we want to index all that information into Amazon TimeStream, which is great for, uh, like it says, time-based data analysis, great for collecting telemetry and uh, visualizing telemetry data on your physical uh, resources. I'm not sure why they're using AWS IoT events here. This kind of seems like a little bit of overkill. But from there, once it's indexed and processed in a way, we also send that into SNS. And that notifies our users that we have successfully received their skid of PS5s. So if you enjoyed this video, check out the playlist on the right for more architecture review videos. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.